All right, good morning, everybody. Okay, uh, we went through kind of a setup last time where we went over what the customer wanted, uh, type of systems and, and things he was looking to do, some of the interfaces we're going to have to deal with. Uh, today, uh, we got a short time. What we're going to do is import everything from Postgres as well as we're going to uh, set up all of the classes and the other areas that we need to do in order to make things ready for development. So once this is all done, then we'll be ready to start developing things, and I will start to put those together. Uh, it's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday time frame, uh, maybe Thursday, kind of depends. I'm going to be out tomorrow, so I'll have to do some catch-up. But this will allow us to get this moving forward a little bit more, and uh, we can start getting regular as we move it. So let's open our application. The application is the Racket Tracker. And the Racket Tracker has got nothing in the current system. So we're going to go straight to the analysis, uh, check it out of the SCM. And let's take a look at our connection parameters. Now I've already filled these in because it, it's not that hard. You just you got to be able to connect to it. If you if you all need some help with Postgres, both Pete and I are very well versed in it, so we'll be able to help you. We use a lot, especially when we deal with mobile and uh, RESTful services. We use Postgres up there on the Amazon servers to to, to do this because it works. It just works. Uh, and they handle most of the problems. So you can see with the test, we get a successful connection, and what we're going to do now is right mouse click. We're going to go to a new data file. We're going to use the data files from an existing database, and it's going to say, it's going to click on Postgres because we told it to, and that's fine there. And the next step is, is we'll have a listing of all three of the tables that we're currently going to be working with. So what I'm going to do is move every one of those over there and get them ready to go and let them kick. Now I've got all three structures. Each one of them match directly what's in the current database uh, laid out, and it's all set up. We're ready to rock and roll. Now, one thing to remember when you do this, especially from a SQL environment, uh, if you have to add a field or something to it later on, which we will probably get into, it is much better to go ahead and add the field in here, then go to the database and put the field there also with an alter statement or within it, or update the, the table with it uh, rather than uh, delete this entirely and re-import from the database or expect this to automatically alter your current database because it won't, okay? Uh, so this, this makes it a little easier. Just you get in your base ones. If you create a whole new table over there, you import it. That way you got that. And then from then on, do your own single uh, field or two that's necessary to get it working from there, okay? Once we're done with this, we're going to save it. And now we're going to start looking at getting in all of the items that we need to have uh, to make this work. Uh, when we go back to the project tree, we've already added the default manager, default manager class, equate, error handling, global variable, and WX manager class. We will be within a week releasing all of the classes with our updates and minor changes that we figured out some new things to deal with parent-child, grandchild, great-grandchild relationships uh, to make it easier along with documentation uh, on how to utilize that because we're going to use it, use it in several places. Uh, within a week or so, it'll be a version 24 uh, repository and a repository will have everything that we deal with. We're also still looking at um, this sharing SCM thing that they have. It seems right now, reading the documentation online, that it's more of an import that you could import from another SCM. So I'm not so sure about the sharing part. I'm going to be reaching out to them and asking them further questions on it as we move forward, okay? So 
Right now, we've only got the uh, one configuration. We will add configurations as we go. We're going to have a RESTful configuration. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a web configuration to, to enter in some stuff. And uh, uh, we'll have the mobile both. Uh, we'll put in the mobile uh, for Android, and we'll put in a mobile for iOS as well. And that way you can uh, see how all of this stuff is built out of the one environment in 24. We're going to build everything in WinDev. We're not, I don't even have installed the actual EXE uh, portion for web dev or mobile. I don't have them installed. There's an option when you install 24 that says, you know, says do you want to install it as a standalone or install it as part of it? And if you do it as a part of it, then you don't you don't have the issue at all with the uh, with the other one. Okay. Uh, secondary, as an as an FYI, um, now I forgot. Oh, okay. Well, let's move forward. Uh, oh, oh, we were also talking about all the co uh, code bricks and stuff. We've made some new code bricks. We use them. And uh, we will be redistributing these as well in order to uh, work with you. Some of them has to deal with the um, the setup and, and usage of the uh, of of the business rules class, uh, as well as the uh, globals and and file manager definitions, things like that. Some some of this stuff is already talked about. If you see a bunch of these that you're interested in, like I have everything for services to create services, uh, loops for just single returns, things like that. I also have some testing stuff, which is test recording close and stuff like that. Then feel free to holler. Uh, I'll, you know, I can always open it up and cut and paste it in a, in a uh, email to you, send it, and you can add it to your, your code bricks yourself and uh, uh, move from there. So we've got everything set up. Now we need to create the management classes that we need to use uh, to actually do the work. Okay. Um, and here's what we got to do. Okay. Okay. In order to make these classes, so what we need to do, what we have is the uh, we need to first of all look at, and this is the way I do it because it's easier across the board. You can generate UML if you want to. Uh, while that's fine, maintaining the UML can be a bit of a pain. Okay. So what I've done is utilize the the, the functionality that they currently have uh, for the uh, uh, three tier architecture. Right mouse click, and I generate a model class. So now I've got a customer model class that's fixing to come up here, and, and this is this is the way I do it. Open, turning away, I guess. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, it seems like we have a little problem with the generating the class out of 24 on this pre-release beta we have. Um, just reported it while we were offline. So I'm going to do it a different way and let you see how that's done. Uh, I'm going to create a class here. We'll go ahead and call it uh, customer. Let that open up the class. And then what I do at that point, if I have to do it that way, I just highlight all of these records and drag them up and put them right there. Okay. Now this is, to be honest with you, this is how it comes in if you generate the, if you right mouse click and generate. So there's not a whole lot of difference here. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I do not use the M underscores. Um, you can if you want to. It works fine, especially since you have the mappings of each one of those. It will work perfectly that way without any problem. But you have the M underscores for every one of those fields. Uh, you can change that inside your um, setup as well to tell it you want to do something else. Uh, the second thing it does is you can see it puts the S in front of everything. 
because uh, it's got the standard, so I take all those out because I don't particularly, I would rather have them on the end than in the beginning, to be honest with you. Um, so your basic is here. I'm going to check on one thing while we got it. I'm going to go over here and check to see whether I'm using the right uh, setup here. Options. Ah, see, I'm using the wrong one. I use the WX Charter. That's the one I use. Okay. All right. So, uh, and you, and that also you, you'll get a copy of that as well. Um, so now I've got this. The second thing I got to do is create a class to manage this record. That's the key point about it. Now is we want to manage this record, and we do that through another class that we're going to create. Now we call that a manager class. So when we do our classes, that one will be a, a new name which we would call customer manager. Now, that's basically saying, okay, for the for the table customer, this is the management class. When that opens up, we'll have a couple things we need to do. This is where your code bricks comes in. Right at the moment, we have to do a couple of them. Uh, we're looking for two things which is the file manager constructor and the file manager definition. Drag out and put the file manager constructor there. It's going to ask you a couple things. What is the file name? Customer is the file name. If you have an alias or know what aliases are, you can put in your own alias for customer, and what you can do is simply go C-U-S-T. So now I've got an alias for the customer. Leave the file class name the same you don't have to change it, but if you're using a different naming convention for some reason and you need to point it to a different table within the system, you can do it that way. Okay? Um, post that in there. Oh, I put it in the wrong one. I got the wrong one. This actually goes down here in this constructor. I, I picked the wrong one. Definition is what you need up here. Okay? And you put that there. Okay. Now, there's a couple things that you that you, that we've got detailed on this. Uh, we got a next memory ID as well as an AR rec. The AR rec is the array of the customer class records of the customer records itself. That is an array of these records. So when you go select all of the customers from the database and get 200 of them, they'll be in that array. The WX Manager classes manages that array, add, changing, deleting. Um, if it's a child, uh, things like that, it's going to do all of that for you, okay, without any problem at all. Uh, I don't think we need the next memory ID either, if I remember right. These are some of our new changes. i got to change my... Uh, code bricks to match. Um, so you got those two items there, and and then of course you, if you need to declare anything else, you can. We uh, because we instantiate a class for the customer, we got to make sure the rec has that assigned to it, and then we tell the WX Manager class that here's the primary key field name, which is just going to be ID. The database file name is customer. The alias is cus, so we'll have cust dot id to get the id as an example, and then we got the file class name to make sure that we got those matching. And the array then is assigned to the WX array. Here's how it works for all those that are just getting curious about this. There is an actual array in the WX Manager classes as well. You inherit that, but you do not have the ability to access this even though we inherit it from the WX Manager class. Okay, So this array here that we have, the WX Manager array, 
allows you then to uh, manage the records with the WX Manager uh, class that we built. And I probably get a little confusing. But this little token right here, this little function right here saying, okay, I'm making whatever the WX Manager way use the same memory space as the AER rec. They're, they're equal. There's one array, basically, and both of them are the same. So from here, for anything I do in this system, it is automatically something AR rec dot whatever I want to do, and the OWX array class knows what to handle with it. Okay, It works out very nicely. It takes care of all the mundane tasks that you have to do, plus gives you an advantage to get around a lot of things. So now we got the customer class done. And we got a couple areas that we can declare this at. If the record is global to the application, and I say this from that standpoint, global to the application, the thing about classes is it usually is based upon um, whatever you're doing normally. So in the element code that we've got going on, there's a couple things that that we need to do. One is if you're working in a test environment and then moving it to production, you you got to have a different way. You got to be able to switch where the things are being located at. Okay, and the way you do that is you create a a connection level here. Uh, DBCon for database connection. And then you can add all of the stuff underneath it, dbcon.server equals dgdata.ccscowboy.com, uh, dbcon dot dot uh, database equals bracket tracker. Spell that wrong. Okay. Now, um, dbcon dot dot h uh, to do to do provider equals hf postgres sql. Now, the user ID and password, uh, we use default manager to, to save those and encrypt them and bring them back and fix it, okay? That way, uh, we don't have it in the code itself, all right? And you don't have to worry about somebody hacking in and getting your user ID and password directly out of, out of the system. So we'll do that a little bit later. Okay, so let's go back to where we were. Uh, at this point in time, we do an H change connection for all the files, dbcon. So now, if in test, if in test mode equals false, then H change connection. The in test mode means I'm testing, so that gives me the ability to actually leave it where it's pointed at in the analysis, which should be my test environment, allow me to do any kind of testing and stuff I want there, and then when I compile it and send it out, it's no longer in test mode, and I can just do the change connection to the uh, correct uh, database and live database, and they're off and running. Everybody's cool. So. If we're going to have, say, customers global through the system to where customers is available on every screen uh, as a drop list or, or things like this, you can declare it here in the project code. And declaring it in the project code will make sure that you have that class of records, your customer records, available in every screen throughout the system. And the way we do that is uh, we do a manager customer is customer manager. Done. Okay. Uh, if you need a specific 
customer. So in other words, you're doing parent-child or you're doing parent stuff where you grab the customer you're working with and you go to multiple screens in order to do work for that particular customer. There's a couple of ways to do that as well. You can pass the class, the customer class, to each one of the procedures that you're going to call. You can do that. Or you can do a uh, rec customer is customer. And that gives you the record structure throughout the entire system as well. We won't need to do that. I just want to explain that to you to give you a, a shot at the way of how that may work. Uh, if you're doing a user ID and login uh, process, we may add that later on to see how you update and change on the fly. But uh, the user would definitely be this direction. I would de I'm going to be definitely putting the user record in here so that way once they've logged in, that user class with all of the logged in information for the user will follow him no matter what screen they're on. Okay? So now let's do a couple more that we're going to need. And uh, we're going to try this again and see if it works. Repair units is the next thing. Let's generate and see if it shows up. No. I think it may be my video that's that's stopping it from doing that. I'm going to try it outside the video and, and see if it works, but we'll just go down, we'll do it the hard way at the moment. So we're going to create another class and this one is called called repair units. And we'll do the same thing. Click on that and move that directly there. Okay. Uh, if you notice, none of the S's came up this time, which is more the way I like it. Um, why do we have string there? String is currency. That's not going to work. We're going to make an adjustment to that right off the bat because that is certainly not going to work there. Um, let me do this. Something happened on my when I created the table, it, it can accept that. So we're going to come down. And the way you do that blocking like I just did is you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and then highlight everything you want. Hit Delete. It's all gone. Okay? Um, the rest of it is clean up. Again, if you want to use the mapping, just put it in there like it is. Use the M underscores for everything you want and everything will be fine. It will work just fine. It's just my old habits is what this is. That's all it is, is my habits, the way I do things, and it does not equate in you having to do exactly the same thing. Oh, I know what that is. That's the string for the them restringing the uh, racket. Okay, so we're going to rename that to restring. Okay, and the reason why is because there's no way that you can use a reserved word on that. So first things first, we're going to go to the dictionary, or the uh, analysis rather, come into repair units, come down to string. And if you're using uh, Postgres, make sure you do it lowercase. So I'm going to just put RE in there. That will change that. Now, the next thing that I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go in the database and do an alter to handle that as well. So let's go here. We'll go into the Racket Tracker. Down the databases, tables, and there's the repair units right there. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to take that string and we're going to alter it. Okay, so we're going to alter table, repair units. Rename, column, string, to, restring. I believe that's how we do it. And query returned successfully. So we've done that. And just to verify that everything is exactly what we want to do, we come here at F5 to refresh. And there it is now, restring. You're done. That's how you do it. You work with SQL a lot, that's about the easiest way to handle it, to be honest with you. It's absolutely the easiest way to handle it. Um, so let's get these out of the way. We're done with that now. We're back here. We've already set that to restring, which is fine. If you use camel case, I do. A lot of times I'll come in here and go ahead and, and, and you know, put the uh, uh, capitals and stuff in there so that way it, you know, it works better. It's up to you if you do that, okay? Um, so let's make the manager class for repair units. Repair. Ah. Sometimes the fingers don't work like it's supposed to. Repair units manager. Create that. Yeah, we're having problems with my video recording this. There seems to be a conflict between the two. Okay, so we got the repair units manager up and running. Uh, we'll go to back to our code bricks and let's put them in correctly this time. So the definition goes in first, sets up here, and that is repair units. And the constructor, add those pieces in. Pair units, are you? And I've got that. Why'd you put in? I put in the wrong thing, didn't I? <laughs> okay, so let's put it in here. Okay, and everything else is done. That one's finished as well. Now, I'm not going to declare this globally because it's only going to be one screen that they'll manage it. So what we do is we declare that at the top of that screen, manage it from that screen, select it from that screen because we're going to have to do it anyway, and, and go from there. So the smart thing to do is not, not declare this all over the place uh, from using the, the project code. So let's close those. And let's go back and create the last table that we've got which is the repair units history. No, you gonna do it? Nope, it don't like it. Okay, uh, create a class, repair units history. Go get all the records here. Uh, we're going to change the alter on this one as well because it's got string in it as well. So we're going to have to deal with that. The thing about this is, is you, you, you know, you feel already it's 
we go through the same stuff everyone else does. You know, we put things together based upon what they tell us, then we realize, ah, oh, that's not going to work that way, and got to change it slightly to fix and, and resolve these problems. And we go through the same thing as everybody else in the development environment does. We just cheated by, well, I didn't really cheat it, but we built systems to help us do this, uh, make it life easier on, on us as we move across, make it faster. Okay, so we've done that. we got to go back to... the analysis and change that field, okay? Okay, so let's go to the dictionary or the uh, analysis. Get my head stuck into something here. Open that up. Let's go down the string. We're going to put the re in front of it. Close that. And then go back over here. Now, here's the cool part about this. All I have to do is put history here and hit the F5, and then both of them are changed now. So everything's good and, and, and awesome in that environment. Let's go ahead and close the analysis. And we gotta make the manager class for that as well. So let's make the manager class for the history. Pair, units, history, manager. Go to our code bricks. Let's put in our stuff here. Let's throw the definition up there. Type in the correct name this time. Okay, got both of those. And let's put in the constructor name. File name is repair units history. And we'll have this as a prefix of reuh. And there we go. Save them all. Do a little recompile. And everything is good to go. Now, for these three tables, we have basically done everything here we need to do to get us ready for development. That's what we've done so far. Um, so, you know, if you have more tables or, or more uh, files that you need to do with this with, then you can certainly do this. Now, everything I'm doing here works in HFSQL as well. It will actually work in flat file technology. We've already put in the, t the stuff in the WX Manager class to handle that as well. So, uh, everything you need is now we're ready to develop some screens. We're, we're ready to take a look at other classes, like we need to interface with uh, Trello, uh, you know, things like that. All that stuff has to be built next. So our next step is to start building our framework on the front end of this thing for the customer to be able to look at it. Not a very long session, 30, 35 minutes. Uh, so we're going to try to keep them down to that point. Uh, you'll be surprised we'll be able to develop a browse and form uh, set up uh, fairly quickly and get through all three of these screens and actually work them in test mode uh, in, uh, in in relatively quick, relatively uh, quick. We'll keep it in a 30 to 45 minute sessions. Uh, I'm also going to go through and show you how to utilize some of the test mode stuff uh, that WinDev has available to be able to see how your systems are running, what takes the most time, uh, you know, so you can uh, work on different issues there to see if something is taking a long time to process. You can drill down and figure out what the what the slowdown is, things like that. That's what we're going to be going through as well. So this is 
this is a this is a good project. This is a good little small enough project to handle uh, and deal with, and we will be able to handle uh, quite a bit with it. Uh, that's it for today. If you have any questions, post it up on our uh, Facebook. I'll be glad to answer any questions that we have. Again, it will probably be close to the end of the week. And uh, we will be releasing all of the changes and stuff for version 24 download of the uh, uh, repository. And uh, that'll, that'll kind of settle us out across the board. Thanks again. Y'all be good or be good at it.